Good day. It's Friday, June the 23rd. I'm Martin Gago with Market Radius Research. And we've got CEO Stuart Jara of Hydrograph joining us today. Hydrograph is a producer and developer of high purity graphene and other nano materials. And the company just announced how its graphene has been shown to extend the operating life of lubricants by more than 24 times. Please remember this is neither recommendation or investment advice. We're here about to learn about the news and the company. Stuart, thanks a lot for uh, bringing us up to speed on this uh, last news. Sounds very impressive, that kind of performance increase on a, a lubricant. Why don't you please tell us about that? Yeah, Martin, first, thank you and good afternoon. Uh, thank you for having me on again. Um, yeah, so recently we announced, we announced some pretty exciting news um, on our performance on lubricants. And, and um, it's interesting because you know, we, we, we expect good results and quite frankly, this exceeded our expectation. Um, and so basically what we did is we put uh, our graphene in base oil, a lubricant, and did some tribolog tribological studies of that. Um, and what tribological is, is a study of two surfaces rubbing against each other. It's physics, it's chemistry, it's material science, it's biology. Um, and what we found was that with our graphene at 0.01% uh, of our graphene in the total solution, it reduced the coefficient of friction by over 70%, and it increased the cycle times by over 24 times. Um, and when I say over four, 24 times is because it's still going. We haven't actually run it out to failure yet. Um, so, so what that top level number is, I don't know yet. It's, it's still going, but it's a quite impressive results. Um, why we think that's really important is, you know, every rotating part or virtually every rotating part needs some form of lubrication, um, which is why it's a $140 billion industry. Uh, so the, the longer you can go without replacing the fuels means more productivity, less downtime, less maintenance, overall benefit to the economy. Yeah, less wear and tear. Okay, that's impressive. So the test is still running, so we don't know uh, where where it's going to fail at. Um, that is impressive. I'm, I guess the, the point of this news release is let investors know as well. You let the public know, be it lubricant companies or hardware companies that have lubrication issues and that maybe they should uh, give you a, a call. So can you maybe talk about what the next steps are in sort of the development of this product or this additive or where you see it sort of commercializing? Now that you've got some great test data, what's the commercialization path from here? Sure. Well, we're actually engaged with several lubrication companies as we speak. And I suspect some of them were not surprised by these results because they've been running those tests alongside us and on their own. Um, so, so we expect that to continue. Uh, we, we, we expect that with this announcement, we'll be get broader exposure to other lubrication and greases, because it also, also be applied to greases, um, and broadening those uh, com company expo exposures. We also now we look, focus on the other properties that we expect to get out of uh, graphene and lubricants, anti-static, anti-corrosion, and, and favorable thermal properties. Uh, so we'll be confirming those testing results in the, in the weeks and months to come. Um, but it's really, you know, to get out to the market, let, you know, the new customers know about the results. Because, again, I expect the ones we were talking about, they know, they've seen the results. Um, and, and to let, you know, our, our stakeholders know how we're at. When we talk about application development, when we talk about, you know, really impacting sales from the application point of view, this is a prime example of that. As an example, where we announced, you know, two weeks ago, of the application of graphene and lithium air batteries. Those are all application driven uh, results. Um, so hopefully everybody started putting the pieces together of why application is very important to us. And as well, while um, it, you're showing the value added, pro, uh, you're doing, you're going down the value chain, not just selling bags of graphene and saying, you guys figure out what to do with it. You're doing the development work and trying to find, the, I guess, the highest value places to put it and then try to find a, an economic rationale to, to buy your uh, uh, graphene. 
in terms of the commercialization, how would, let's say with lubricants go, would it, would you think you would partner with a lubricant company who would then buy, like start buying readily off of you or it would, um, I don't know, a company like Caterpillar who needs a lot of equipment, they like someone like that could, or a machine company or, or in which manner would you, what, what are some possible manners that could go out to market? Well, that's a great question. You know, we actually see a, a both a push pull effect. Yeah. Um, so we would have to work with the lubrication companies, the, the blenders, uh, so they actually put these our graphene as an additive into their lubricants. Uh, but the pull comes, you know, as companies like Caterpillars and, and you know, to some extent, even consumers say, hey, I, you know, I want to go longer. I want to get these benefits. Um, they create that demand that that also the blenders would have to then meet by incorporating our graphene. Um, and, and, you know, these types of announcements and bringing awareness to the market helps in both those areas. With lubricants and putting things into engines, I guess you'd have to be concerned, does it break a warranty or what happens? Like if, uh, where, um, how long do you think and what kind of major milestones do you need to hit before it could come to market? Could it, your lubricant come to market and as an additive in someone else's uh, lubricant like in this year or would that be more of a 2024 event or or how many testing cycles does it have to go through how long is sort of the de-risking process uh yeah look i think not this year uh you know we still think that the first revenues will, will start coming to the second half of 2024 could okay. lubrication be one of them yes yeah. um it's possible that the lubricant is the one um, you know, we're going after several markets and we're saying one of them is going to, to hit in 2024. Um, and this is certainly one of them. Remember, additives and lubrication is not new, right? No. Lubricants today has tons of additives. Yeah. Um, so, so the nice thing about this is it's been done before adding stuff into oils to get better performance. Yeah. Uh, so we expect to be replacing those additives uh, with yeah. ours. Um, and, and, and I, also the environmental impact of it, which is the other side of this. It's not only the economic and the feature benefits, but you know, the, the, the longer you run, the less base fossil fuels you need to produce to make lubricants and the less change out means the less oils you need to dispose of once the oil is spent, or the lubricant is spent. Yeah, yeah. And, and I guess there's some time as well, there could be some other additives that are call it synergistic with your graphene that even enhance that so that their chefs and scientists need to do some uh, recipe cooking up over the next little while right that's a great way to say it. their scientists are definitely chefs uh yeah. they're, they're actually putting the right ingredients together uh so personally do i think it's going to be base oil and just graphene no uh, i do suspect there'll be other additives in there it's yeah. actually getting the right mixture and I think that's where the partnership with and working with uh, lubrication companies makes sense because we don't have that level of, of depth of expertise. I mean, that's a that's a whole science on its own, as I mentioned yeah. earlier. Yeah, you don't want to become a competitor in the lubricant. You want no. an industry, you want to supply them and they've got their brands, they've got their distribution. Yeah, and, and, and to think that we could actually replicate their, their channel to market would be very arrogant. We, we, yeah. we know we can't do that now. Can we benefit from it? Can we leverage it through them? Absolutely. Yeah. All right. You mentioned you expect something to go commercial in the second half of next year. Lubricants is a contender, let's say, of that. Can you just, without getting into all your other business lines, just briefly, what are your, you've got lubricants and what are the other kind of main product categories that are kind of getting pushed to the finish line? Yeah. So I think um, uh, coatings, um, resins, composites, those are all large markets that we think are all in the, the, the running. Yeah. All right. And you, with those, you're taking roughly the same strategy. You're doing some base research to show, hey, look what this does. But the final formulation in that, you work with the end user, the lubricant or the resin company to for them to figure out exactly the recipe and, and uh, formula of how they want to implement it. A absolutely. What we keep trying to say is we know graphene really, really well. Yeah. Our customers know their material really, really well. 
to work so together. The path to success is bring those two knowledge bases together to execute the final solution. All right. Well, that sounds good. Uh, Stuart, is there anything else you want to add before wrapping up here? No, I think we're really excited. You know, I'll, I'll end and say we're really excited. I think, um, uh, you know, we start out with everybody understood that graphene could add a lot of value uh, to different markets. Then the market struggled because the graphene didn't have the purity uh, to give those values. Ours does. Um, so we will continue to pursue applications. And we, like we announced, again, a few weeks ago about uh, lithium air batteries, tremendous progress results there. Lubricants, tremendous progress results there. And, you know, in the weeks and months to come, we expect to continue to announce other applications or further enhancements of these applications, all bringing credibilities with our customers and our stakeholders. All right. With that, Stuart, we'll call it uh, a day here. Thanks a lot for talking with us and uh, looking forward to seeing your news flow and getting you back to discuss as uh, things progress. Thank you, Martin.